Yeah, today we're gonna to take a little tour. We're gonna to take a little tour of Kauffman Stadium, which is the home of the Kansas City Royals. And when you go to another ball club stadium, the rule is you wear as much Cub stuff as possible. Unless, of course, you're Leslie. That's right. If you're Leslie, you don't wear Cub stuff. Nope. Sure Ever. Ever. Although, well, I will tell you this. We went to the Iowa Cubs game and you wore your Cubs I gear. Did. And the, the Cubs have only lost one game since she, she wore the Cubs gear. So I'm gonna need you to wear that again really soon. Okay, if they lose another game, I'll throw it on for one game, boost them back up. Good deal, appreciate you. <laughs> We're looking forward to the tour today. I've never yeah. actually stepped foot onto a big league field before. Oh, been to true. lots of stadiums, yeah. uh, been to lots of games across the country, but never actually that's been right. out onto the field, never done a stadium tour of a baseball club, true, never yeah. been like behind the scenes or anything like that. So um, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's yeah. going to be fun. It is. Even though you're not a baseball fan. Yeah. I'm a Rizzo fan. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> He's a Yankee now. You can't uh, root for oh, Rizzo. I know. Oh, I can still love him <laughs> from a distance. All right, let's do it. Okay. VIP status. Uh, I'm not sure where the entrance is for people like me, but uh, kind of a big deal. I'm gonna probably need an escort. Oh, I'll Take escort me to... you somewhere. <laughs> you gonna be my escort? <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. I got the yeah. VIP pass. Uh -huh. Backstage. Oh. <laughs> it's a party with Wag. <laughs> well, we're in the suites now. It's where the rich folks watch baseball games. All right, we're going down into the press box. It's a quiet area. So I would not yeah. be allowed here on game day. No. <laughs> but it's pretty cool to see. So this is where all the uh, commentators calling the game would sit and they would look out here so they could see the game really well. They would also have monitors up here that they could see, you know, like replays so they're calling games. The statisticians are sitting up here so they're giving them information as they're on the radio or the TV calling the games. Foul balls actually make their way up here. These are open on game day. And when the foul balls come up here, they actually have come up here and put holes in the wall back here. Look at that. That was humming, man. Holy crap. When you visit and do a tour, you can put a pin in where you're from. And I noticed there's not a pin from Poplar Bluff, Missouri. So I'm going to put a pin right there. There it is, Hopper Bluff. We are now heading into the George Brett Lounge. If you have followed baseball at all, you know George Brett was one of the greatest Royals players of all time. And this is a pretty impressive so this is George Brett suite. suite. Madam? Yeah. Yeah, great. So this is where you would sit if you were in the George Brett suite. The Triple Crown suites are right here. And the owner suite is on the corner of the Triple Crown suites. We just got to go into one of those and they're really nice too. Now we're in the Royals Hall of Fame. This is all part of the tour. Some very cool Royals history in here. Um, jerseys, baseballs, Hall of Fame commentators, uh, memorabilia, just a really cool, really cool area. Are you having fun? Yes. Are you learning baseball stuff? I'm learning it, but I'm not committing it to memory. <laughs> but it's interesting in the moment. <laughs> it is. Yeah. George Brett had 3,154 hits in Major League Baseball. This bat right here, this is 3,000th hit bat. And I asked about the pine tar bat from the big pine tar home run controversy with George Brett. That bat is actually in Cooperstown at the, uh, at, the, at the Baseball Hall of Fame. So we don't get to see that today, but we do get to see the bat where he made his 3,000th hit. And there's still quite a bit of pine tar on here. Not sure that old George learned his lesson. Oh, and here are the World Series trophies that the Royals have have won. I like the 1985 World Series trophy because they beat the Cardinals. <laughs> this is where the visiting team would come and put all their stuff. They won't let us go into the Royals because the Royals is actively being used. It's in the season right now and they leave personal items and belongings in there so they won't let us go in here. But this is what both of the locker rooms would look like. But this is the opposing 
opposing team's locker room. They got endless supply of bubble gums and sunflower seeds. And um, there's actually a barber shop too. It's player sponsored. There were a couple of players in the Royals who really just were digging their beards and hair at the time, and and uh, so they sponsored a barber shop and they set it up in there. And so now the barber shop is a staple and it stays here. So even the opposing team can come when they're visiting and playing against the Royals. They can stop in and get a haircut. This is the way that the Royals would uh, come out of their clubhouse and into the dugout on game day. Well, being down in the dugout is really cool. Just being here, being able to lean on the rail like the players do and the managers do during the game is, is awesome. Never been able to do this before. Never been in a, in a big league dugout before. So it's really cool. And the, being right on the field just gives you a sense of what the players and the managers see on a daily basis from their from their vantage point. So it's a very cool if you're a baseball fan. When your tour is complete, just like any amusement park USA, yeah. they funnel you through the gift shop. Yeah. Hoping that you will buy some stuff. And, you know, because we're VIPs, yeah. we get 10% off any Royals gear that we would like to purchase. I would not like to purchase anything. <laughs> Hard pass. Hard pass. No offense. They have a great women's selection, though. Yeah, and it was a great tour, yeah. but I'm not buying any Royals stuff. Yeah. Thank you to the sponsor of today's video, RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. One of the first things you're always going to want to do when you get your new RV mm -hmm is change out the mattress. Absolutely. Because the mattresses that come in these things, <laughs> it's like sleeping on plywood, yes. honestly. Mm -hmm. um, we have the Aurora Lux yes. in the soft, oh, yeah. in the RV King, <laughs> and it regulates our body temperature. It has like science going on in there that yes. keeps you at a perfect 88 degree sleeping temperature. But if that's not for you, they have a bunch of different styles, a bunch of different firmnesses, yes. and they're custom made for RVs. Yes. So they will fit in RVs. Exactly. Unlike some regular mattresses that you'll find in the store. They also come with a 120 night sleep trial, a 10 year warranty, and free shipping directly from the factory in Arizona. They don't just have mattresses. No. They have accessories. I love accessories. We have the pillows, the sheets. Um, our daughter has one of their weighted, weighted blankets. blankets. They yeah. also have mattress protectors and all kinds of other accessories. Hey, check this out. This is the most coolest part. We can save you 25% mm -hmm. on your next RV mattress with RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. All you gotta do is pop over to the link in the description of the video and use the promo code WAGS and save 25% at checkout. For this month only, we can save you an additional 5%. So 30% savings on your RV mattress. All you gotta do is look in the, in the description below. It'll mm -hmm. have a link and it'll tell you all the instructions, but it's only this month. So only August, 2023. So if you're watching this after August, 2023, don't worry, we can still save you the 25%. Mm -hmm. But if you're in August of 2023, make sure you get that savings of the extra 5%. Yes. Well, now we're at the Harry S. Truman Library and Museum. Yes. I wonder if they have an oval office and a desk. One can only hope. What are you doing? E F P T O Z L P E D P E C F D E C F C C. <laughs> Truman had a pretty rough start to his presidency. He took over because FDR died, and it was still in the middle. Well, not the middle, but toward the end of World War II, and a lot of tough decisions were made, and not everybody knew when the Truman was going to be able to do the job very well. And, um, he was a soldier before that, a captain in the army, and commanded uh, a battery, an artillery battery, in, in World War One. And uh, so he had some military experience. He was a smart guy. Um, but then when FDR yeah. died, uh, there was not a lot of confidence in his ability to lead the country. But um, he swore in. It was really cool to see the Bible that they have over there that he actually swore in on. And uh, they have a, a plug over there after when he dropped or the dropping of the bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, a plug that, that is just like a safety mechanism for the nuclear bomb. They replaced that green plug with the red plug, but they have the green plug over there that they used to drop. So that was, that was a really cool artifact. And um, lots of other cool stuff here too. They have the, uh, the little portal that plugs into the, into the deck of the mighty Missouri. Uh, USS Missouri, where the uh, Japanese actually surrendered in World War II, which me and Leslie have stood there on the Mighty Mo in the spot 
where the Japanese surrendered to Truman. So that's a really cool piece of history too. But they do have the little plate, and there's another. There's a plate at the one on the Mighty Mo still too that marks the the location of where the Japanese surrendered. This is the actual Bible that uh, Harry Truman put his hand on when he was sworn into oath only two hours after FDR was pronounced dead. Jerry and Teresa are a very important spy mission. <laughs> Top secret. Yeah, they're being totally serious. We're just over here screwing around. We can't even hear anything in here. Not only did Truman do good when he took over the presidency, he actually thrived and got reelected. Yeah. Even though it was called incorrectly yeah. by Chicago Tribune. The early elections, they predicted he wasn't, and so the, yeah. they printed newspapers saying he was defeated. Yeah. How can you allow that? That's irresponsible printing of the press. Well, we should definitely write a sternly worded letter yes. to the Chicago Tribune. Absolutely. <laughs> How dare you. There was an assassination attempt on President Truman, I think it was 1950, and uh, the guy who tried to kill him ended up in a heap the bottom of the stairs and uh it's really cool though because they have the they have the weapons here they have the pistols here that were used to try to assassinate uh president truman there's some of the stuff that was in the white house when truman was president some paintings uh piano this was a fireplace in the white house and some paintings that were there also the dinnerware and the usually the first lady is the one that designs the uh the presidential settings and we learned that when we were at the uh, presidential museum in florida there's a beam up here that was removed from the original white house during the renovation and then after the re renovation was complete they gave harry truman a key there's the key down there key to the white house here is the oval office as it would have been when harry truman was in office so they brought in and redid the oval office exactly as it would have been at the time he was president. I always like seeing these. These are interesting because just all this stuff has changed. The, to look at the TV, I mean, you know, the phone, the decor, a lot of the stuff the same. I mean, the actual office itself is the same. The painting of Washington is the same. Um, a lot of the same stuff. But um, and you can see the seal on the carpet now, which I think now is a colored seal. Um, but it's very cool to see what it would look like. You can just imagine Truman there sitting and making some crazy decisions because man, he had a he had a presidency where there was a lot of stuff going on. It's Truman's office. His, his library office. Yeah, he actually worked here. Yeah. After he was president, he came here and they built this. And this is actually where he worked out of for a long time. It's very cool. Yeah. I couldn't work with this situation going on. On my desk? No. I was always a clean desk kind of guy. Everything had its place. Yeah, I couldn't. That'd be chaos for me. But mm -hmm. they said that his was always cluttered with knickknacks and from mementos. Visitors. Yeah, from visitors that yeah. came and gave him something. So he would just feel, I don't know, felt obligated or just thought it was very nostalgic or very cool to, to just keep on his desk. Yeah. But to me, I'd be like, all this crap's got to go. I mean, I'll put it somewhere. I'll still like it. But it's not going on my desk. <laughs> When you come downstairs, there's some vehicles. The 1941 Chrysler Coupe. And then we have this guy down here, which I don't know which one this is. This is a 1941 Chrysler Windsor sedan. And this is a 1950 Lincoln Cosmopolitan. Let's see what all it had here. Two heaters, two radios, four cigarette lighters, two collapsible seats, and hydraulically operated window system. Top of the line. <laughs> also downstairs they have a display and portraits of all of the trees that survived Hiroshima and the Nagasaki bombings in World War II. So quite a few trees that still survived and have thrived and gone on to live. We're out in the courtyard now and this is where Harry Truman and Bess, his wife, and their daughter Margaret are intermed. So this is where they're buried at. Very fitting, nice place. Very beautiful out here. Nice nice garden, uh, very peaceful. And they get visitors every day. So 
that's good too. There's a time capsule out here. And it's going to be opened on May 8th, 2076. I'll only be 98. You'll be 99. Neither one of us will be here. Hmm? Neither one of us will be here. Speak for yourself, man. I'll be 98. You'll be in your prime, right? I might even come here. You're not going to be around when you're 98. Truth is, 10 minutes from now, I won't even remember exactly. that this is here. That's a true story right so there. So when I'm 98, there's no possible way I'm going to pull this out of the old memory bank and go, you know what? I remember that time capsule from the Harry S. Truman Library Museum. I'm going to go back and see what's in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> be interesting to know what's in there. We will never know. We will not live to see it, though. Hey, stick around for a few seconds. We're going to honor a fallen hero. If you want to get involved with helping us help veterans, everything you need to know is right down in the description of the video. Appreciate you watching. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.